So, so our offering is based upon a Bombardier 6500 aircraft. Uh, and we look at our overall offering as a system of systems. So it's comprised of the air vehicle system and multiple ground nodes that are all integrated together to be able to provide both the Army and the Air Force the data that they need to be able to do their missions. So one of the things that we, we believe is very important in this is that we build in from the beginning modularity and flexibility because we know very well that the threat that we have today will change and be in the future there'll be new threats, different threats, and we're building in the capability in the system to add growth, to add those capabilities for the future without having to recertify the aircraft, without having to redo the entire network. The overall network is all going to be based in a, in a fiber infrastructure and we are building it Oversized, so we are oversizing all the processing, oversizing all the memory, so that when that time comes and we need to make a change, the change will be very easy to implement. So one of the other things we feel is very important is to have the right partners in Korea. And we are working together with KAL and a number of other smaller companies to provide as much Korean content as possible and setting KAL and those companies up for the long term. We, we understand that once we deliver the aircraft, you're going to have the aircraft operational for 25 to 30 years. You don't want to have the aircraft go to back to the US to be fixed or maintained or upgraded. All that can be done here on the peninsula with the group we have because we're embedding them with our design team in the beginning and they will go with the design all the way through the process and maintain the aircraft here in Korea for the life. So the overall, the overall program consists of four aircraft, two transportable sites that are transportable by either vehicle or by aircraft that will be stationed with the Army and interface with the Army uh, command and a fixed site that will be based for Air Force Intel and interface both of those. The Army will interface through its GCCC command and control and the Air Force will interface through the KAOC. All of that will be integrated in a battle management command and control set of software that is also replicated on the aircraft. That entire network of sites is all integrated together with multiple communications nodes on the aircraft, we can talk simultaneously to the Army and to the Air Force so that both of the missions are served at the same time mm -hmm. as opposed to sending data to a ground site and waiting for the ground sites to send pieces of data which may be a long time. And in the case of some of the targets, time is of the essence. Yes, so um, what we're uh, looking to do is we have uh, the team, which is uh, ourselves, Korean Airlines, and Bombardier. And what we're going to do is have an integrated product team, and that product team will have a full design authority. He'll have the lead design authority, but KAL and Bombardier will also sign off on the design as it gets into finalization. And the, the aircraft itself, the first two aircraft will be modified in the United States. KAL will come over with their, their designers and their um, uh, program managers and they'll understand and learn how to do the modifications. Then the next two aircraft, three and four, will be completely modified here in, the, in Korea uh, we will fly over green aircraft to do that. Um, and then from that point on, we will support KAL uh, in uh, the maintenance logistics for the program over a 30, 35 year, year time frame. So, so the, 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 the way the integration itself will progress is we will integrate the mission system 
in the sill in, in Raytheon and then migrate that to a same type sill in Wichita for the first aircraft, that whole sill will then move to Korea to support aircraft to three and four and the certification process of all four aircraft within the Korean military. So in this configuration, we have 10 operators. You'll notice that the way that these are in the model is not really the way that they are out there. The way they are out there is these are actual equipment racks in between each of the consoles. And we did that to allow us to be more flexible in how we reconfigure the aircraft. So in the case of this model here, as you can see, there's two equipment racks for mission equipment here. There's four racks here and two racks that are, you can't see, but they're back here. So by using these other new modular racks, we can actually relocate this equipment within the aircraft. These racks don't need to be here. So what that would allow us to do is to have more crew restroom by moving these racks back here and distributing the equipment so the even in the 10 configuration, with this rack gone, then you're back to having multiple crew rest positions. So all of the operator positions are reconfigurable under software control. And so anybody can do any mission sitting at any console. The other thing that we've done is for the signals intelligence capability, we can either have operators on board or the operators can be on the ground operating the equipment on the aircraft, which frees up two operator positions for additional battle management command and control operators. And by having the modular racks like are out front, we end up with redistributing the equipment uh, with two racks that will build into the aircraft, but they won't have any equipment originally because we've distributed all that equipment here. Those racks will be in, the, in there with power and interconnects, but they'll be there for growth. So all of the mission equipment on the aircraft, uh, one of the, the nice things about the 6500 is it has ample power. Uh, and with everything configured with the signals intelligence, if, the, if Korea decides that they want to also have a LORAP with the radar, and all the other mission equipment, we still have in excess about 40 kVA of power unused. So it provides for growth and, and, and margin in design. Yeah, I, just, I, I think that uh, this is uh, ideal for the Korean military uh, as they look forward. Um, this is the aircraft that will help them in that operational control transfer. And it's the aircraft that will be interoperable not only with their own assets, but with the other allied assets on the peninsula. Uh, again, it is today's state of the art and it's configured to be future state of the art. So you're looking at a 30 year life cycle, low maintenance, low cost, low operating cost, and we think that is specifically what they're looking for to perform all those missions for the defense and the deterrence of the Korean government and the Korean people. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank, you. You, Thank you for visiting with us. Yeah.